is always on. It's Build a Bear on air with the Mosley family. I'm Mark. I'm Mandy. And I'm Matt. We're an actual family of entertainers here to entertain you every day. And we have very special guests in the studio from Boys to Men, Sean Stock. Hey, woo! Yes. The legendary Grammy, multiple Grammy winning. You have your own street in back in Philly named after you. That you is have true. A star on the Walk of Fame right down the street. That is not a rumor. You guys have broken all kinds of records. Yeah. And uh, we're just so happy that you're here today, that you took Thank some you for time. having me, man. Yeah. You guys are fun. Imagine, yeah, just, just the sentence, just the first sentence you started off with. Imagine having a Grammy. Just, yeah. just one. Just, uh, like, just, just a single going Grammy. Going home and be able to look at that. That's just it's so, so dope. Awesome. Where, do you, awesome. where do you have it at the house? It's in my family room. Oh, wow. Like, some of them, I got four, so I... Actually, yeah, all of them are in my family. I'm kind yeah. of thinking just, about just four. Spread them around. No worries. <laughs> Spread them just around. Just one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom. Right, you know, right, right. right. You just gotta go to the bathroom. Toilet There's a Grammy. dispenser. It's like right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a Grammy. <laughs> it's a Grammy <laughs> toilet dispenser. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You, you, you gotta flush, have use for something. You know? <laughs> They're very pragmatic. Eh? You know? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you, we look around and we see uh, groups like uh, New Kids on the Block. Mm-hmm. Re, kind of reforming and doing new music. Backstreet oh, yeah. Boys are doing their thing, get back yeah. in the studio. Mm-hmm. You guys never really stopped, though, right? No, we never stopped. Yeah. Um, the music industry is is very, uh, I guess, funny in, in its perception. Um, a lot of people think that. But, well, how you started, if you're not doing what you were doing when you first started, then you must have fallen off or mm. you must have just kind of disappeared and you're not doing yeah. exactly, yeah. But the industry is, has many, half many layers. Yes. And, yes. and uh, yes. the, the way to survive is just knowing how to navigate through it. When you're not played on radio as much as you used to be, if you were smart enough to develop a market um, that consists of touring and performing and things of that nature, you can do that consistently. So yeah. you guys don't, I mean, you guys your last album was 2017, so not that long ago. But yep. you don't really feel any pressure to like get back in the studio, no, like force that, right? No, no. Well, I mean, when, when you've got so many hits, it's like you know. Let's 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 put it this way: this year alone, at least within the last six months, let's put it this way, around six months. So that means a little the tail end of 2018. We did car- carpool pool karaoke with G- G- Giselle Bunchin. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be in a movie May 4th, singing those same old songs with a. Uh, Charlize Theron long and shot. Seth Rogen with Long Shot. Amazing. I saw the trailer. Yeah. It's yeah. very funny. Um, we did a uh, CMT Crossroads with a new country artist named Brett Young. Um, that's going to air March 27th. Um, we just sold out Radio City Music Hall um, a few weeks ago. Yeah. So... Wow. No need. No, no, We're okay. no pressure yeah. to put out new music. No but pressure you, at all. As a solo artist, <laughs> that's been, baller right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've so. been you've been doing you've been in the studio recently. Been in the studio. Um, going to release my first full length um LP May thirty first. That is the date as of now. Um, we just released a little EP, little couple of songs to get people's you know appetites. You yeah. know, hopefully, you know, going and and uh, just actually just doing those things. Like I'm actually starting as a new artist again. As far as I'm concerned, like, because yeah. I, I come from that school where I know technology and things have changed in music somewhat, mm-hmm. but I still believe in the, 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 the down and dirty, getting people's faces, singing songs, going and making appearances and things of that nature. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying doing that though. Cause I, I love it. And, and it's teaching me how to carry my own weight as a, a solo artist. So it's good. When you uh, reflect back on the early years of Boys to Men, can you remember that moment where you thought, oh, wow, we made it? And what did that feel like? Was there a first time you heard Motown Philly on the radio? Well, or? Th- first that, time people th- came to th- your th- hotel room and stopped well, you? You know what? I, th- I think the first time was when it was after we won our first American Music Award. And we flew back home to Philly and... The airport was packed. Wow. Yeah. Like the whole airport, like fans greeting us, the whole nine. Like it, we had to burrow through Security, hundreds of people. Yeah. yeah. Like it was like a Beatles moment for us. And, That's so cool. and that happening in your own hometown makes you feel like a king, man. Wow. So that, that, that was definitely a profound moment for me. When you look out into that audience now, do you see a lot of families or you see a lot of couples? What do you see, or a mix of both? What do you see more of? Here's the anomaly. That is boys to men, and and this is this is fact. Since we've been on the scene, uh, it's always been a mixed bag. It's always been families, black, white, red, brown, purple. Mm. 
You guys like, have purple people coming to the show? We have purple Dang. people coming. It's crazy. Did the Blue Man Group show up? Because I know that they have Occasionally, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, seriously. They, they oh, show wow. up. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was a joke. <laughs> no. like, I mean, psych. Bam. <laughs> right, but yeah. Shots I mean, fired. So, yeah, so it's always been that with us. Like, families enjoy us. And, yeah. and we've always had that uh, that appeal. And, and it's... We can't explain it, but something it's just, for everyone. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just been that type of thing for us. So uh, you're doing a kind of little thirty second promo for the show. Mm-hmm. What can fans expect to see when they come to a boys to men show? S- singing, dancing, entertainment, sparkly jackets. Mm. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You know, instrumentation. We play guitars. We do a Mil- Motown tribute. Nice. Um, do you get on like, the piano? Yeah. Well, I don't personally, but uh, I do play the guitar a bit. My my other partner Nate, he plays bass, and we play rock music. We play uh, it, like it's it's a variety of things. Like it's hard for me to do a promo. I'd be a horrible promo guy. <laughs> <laughs> but all I would say is just come out. I guarantee you, you will fun. enjoy yourself. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is. Like it's it's what people don't expect because what people, I guess, know of us is you know we sing ballads and slow songs, so people think they're going to be bored to death by singing a bunch of you know, <laughs> you know that type of thing. But it's actually a very exciting show. You know that 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 rem- that I didn't have this question like written out, but that inspires a question. You so you guys started out and then you you became known. For these amazing, huge, very emotional ballads, mm-hmm. what was that? What was that like? Because in the beginning, you know, you you had, you know, you had some up tempo numbers, some very dancey numbers, you mm-hmm. know, and then, but the, but what happened was these ballads, and I think it did it start with um, "Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday." Yeah, I mean, Motown was, Philly was our very first single, but then "It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday" was our first. I guess. I guess you could say, and that was ballot. a tribute yeah. to someone very close to you guys. Then. Well, it, it it became that. Right. Um, we lost our our role manager back in 1992. Um, he was murdered in Chicago, wow. yes. and uh, that song kind of took on a whole new meaning. But we made that before then, and, oh, really? and, and it's funny because when we we did that record, there weren't I don't I don't think any songs played that were a cappella you know, on, on radio. Right. And we were, we had <laughs> back and forth with our president, a friendly one, like at the time, Gerald Busby, who also was passed. Um, so it was like the Bohemian Rhapsody moment, right? Yeah. Where I guess you're trying so, to convince him. Yeah. Like, hey, this song has no instruments on it at all. Right. But, and he's probably going, well, I'm not putting that no, out. No, he wasn't. He was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Blah, 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 blah. And we were like, trust us. I'm telling you, people going to love it. And he rolled the dice. And so. It became one of our biggest records. Yes. And let's talk Such. about the fact that something like that hasn't been played on, like like completely just raw like that hasn't been played on radio yeah. ever. Since. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you name a, a, a huge hit since No. Then? No. Yeah. It was no. totally acapella? Yeah. Not at it's, all. It, it was, yeah. The closest thing that Maybe you get is like the pentatonics, stuff. yeah. Right, But right. they were creating but instrumentation with their mouths. With, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's straight up just you guys singing. Which and I love. And I'm yeah. proud to say that I, I'm, I, I, can, I can say that I helped uh, discover pentatonics because they were on our uh, acapella show that I helped judge called um, Sing Off. Right. So where cool. pentatonics was first seen to the world and they won the actual uh, show, you know, wow. that year. They won that season and everything. And we knew from the first like episode, we were like, oh, yeah. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those, they're, they're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> going into that, how has the industry changed? I mean, you've been in it for a hot minute. How yeah. has it changed? What do you like about it? Don't like about it? Because it can well, easily be said about boys to men that you guys helped. You guys really were one of the the groups that helped R and B become that dominant re, again, again, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, as it was in the sixties and seventies mm-hmm. to help it become dominant again in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You really were on the forefront of that. I mean, you know, it, it the stars aligned and. It's one of those things where you're just grateful. You're, you're grateful that it was you that was chosen. Yeah. Like, and we we do this because we love it, and we joined together as a group because we loved it, and it wasn't for any other motivation. We didn't get together to, hey, we're going to get a record deal, and we're going to rule the planet. Like it, it literally just four dudes like the song and Motown. Yeah. We just wanted to sing. Right. And, yeah. and um, it just so happened that it became this. And as far as how the how the music has changed, I mean, it, it uh, it's more instantaneous. Like you, you can become uh a 
popular artists a lot faster because it's a good it's a good thing in the sense of artists being now being able to bypass uh the old uh the old regime yeah. as far as the gatekeepers, the, the gatekeepers of right. the industry and and who you know if if you you have to bypass us to get you know discovered and in a lot of cases it's it's good that kids are able to express themselves and things of that nature but yeah. what isn't good about it is a lot of them are kind of just diving into something that they don't understand, yeah. which is why you see a lot of artists come and go. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right? You, you'll see artists come up with something huge, and they just were not prepared for it. They yeah, the they, they, yeah, yeah, right. they, yeah. The follow up or how to actually create something called a career. Mm. So those uh, rudiments still exist, and they still have to exist in order for an artist to actually have a career outside of three summers. And I think. Uh, again, it's it's a it's a good and bad thing. It's uh, because yeah. you see a lot of artists blow up and do really really well, and because of that, and because they have a lot of them lack guidance, and a lot of them lack the tutelage to actually know how to uh, work in the business. Sometimes they become a little pretentious. Sometimes they become a little you know high minded and, yeah. and think that they you know they hot. You it's know, like tomorrow, and, bro. And, 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 right. And, tomorrow. And, and and they don't really understand what it takes to make another great album. Right. And, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. And because we were taught like the reason why we lasted as long as we have is because we had great teachers. Yeah. So we knew how to, to navigate through this. So when those times happen, when, you know, our, our career was on a downslope and mind you, everybody that has a career longer than 10 years has had a down, have seen some valleys yeah. and some peaks and things of that nature. So it's, it's knowing how to survive it. Yeah. It's like we kind of mentioned earlier. It's like, okay, I don't, we don't have a lot of songs played on the radio. doesn't mean you still can't perform. Still right. doesn't mean you can't make money. Still doesn't mean that merch, yeah, everything. merch and, yeah. and, 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 and uh, publishing and, you know, shows and things of that nature. Like there's Being other movies with it, Seth Rogen and right. Shirley's. There's, there's on, more yeah. than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. And, and a lot of these artists, very few that really, know how and not only not only just know how but really ingest that information to know what right. to yeah do. exactly well i think there's a lot of creators and not a lot of icons there's a lot of people that are creating and they're creating great content and the labels are like oh this is this is hot I'm, i want this out you know under the label and it's like but what's next right. you want to know the funny thing especially about it is that there are icons still but a lot of the icons that I see anymore, I can't really count any icons in the 21st century. None in the not 21st the, century. Not, no, excuse me, not in the 21st century. But necessarily, I mean, not in the last you've, two, got, three you've years. got people that are still alive. God, you know, God willing that they have lengthier lives. Elton John, Paul McCartney, mm-hmm. people like that. Prince is gone. Michael Jackson right. is gone. Elvis right. Presley's gone. Frank Sinatra is gone. All right. of these icons of right. the music industry across all genres. Yeah. They're not here anymore. They're going away. They're, they're not here anymore to teach the new people. Well, I, I asked this question. It's kind of funny. It correlates to what we're talking about. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, when you know, I went to my 10-year high school reunion, there were certain songs that pretty much was the signature mm-hmm. of our generation. Right. Yeah. Right? You know, the, and it's normally marked by 10 years. Like yeah. Every decade yeah, yeah. restarts pretty much a new era of music and culture and, and things of that nature. And I'd, I'd look and i say, I feel bad for these kids because it's like <laughs> in, in 2019 or even in 2007. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's an interesting And you go back work. to your 10, yeah, your 10 yeah. years of, and, 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 you know, a reunion. What are they playing? Exactly. Yeah. Like, what are the songs? Like, who are the artists? Like, Soldier Boy. Right. <laughs> Okay. Not even, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, not I'm, even that, not even that level of quality anymore. Right. right. It's, it's, cr- <laughs> it's, it's cr- like, so. Like the DJ has to have a million songs in the Serato yeah. because there there aren't too many artists that mark yeah. a generation. The 60s yeah. had it. The 50s had it. The 70s had it. Yeah. The 80s had it. Yeah. And the 90s. Like yeah. you can mark it instantly think 60s and think boom. Yeah. 70s. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, you know. You can pick at least one artist from each generation. Yeah. Of each like, generation. They yeah. dominated. So yeah. what do you pick? Ariana and Grande. It, or Justin Bieber. But that's it. But it's there, like, there was a lot of people during those past generations that all set their mark. All marked. And yes. never tried marked to interfere each with genre. each other. Yeah. Right. Had right. their own place. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's kind of strange. Because yeah. like in the 80s, you had Madonna, you had Michael Jackson, you right. had Prince, you yeah. had U2, yeah. you had Billy Joel, you had Phil Collins, you had all these. And this is just like, off top yeah, of your head. Yeah, just off top of my head. <laughs> yeah. Right? 
And those are all legends. Yeah, Janet yeah. Jackson. Right. You know, like, I mean... Just well, that, that's the thing. There aren't the really dominant, any legends anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I meant as for, mean as far as you have a lot of talented people. Yeah. But they're not iconic because you got to be taught. Yeah. yeah. You got to mm-hmm. be taught how to be great. Yeah. Like, it's this, this not just your raw talent. You know, oh, yeah, even Jordan had a coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to have somebody showing you what you can do with that raw energy. Wow. Yeah. Do you, uh, you got some kids, uh, do any of your kids uh, show any signs of following oh, yeah. in their dad's footsteps? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter. Yeah. My daughter's crazy. And and even my son. My son, unfortunately, he, he's, you know, buckled down with, with schoolwork. So he had to put his acting and stuff to the side. But he's a great actor. Yeah. And he has he has great skills. But my daughter's like a triple threat. She can sing. She can act. She can dance. Like, she's nuts. And she's such a, she's so me. Like, in a sense of. Personality. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's like a butterfly. She's yeah. camera ready. Yeah, yeah. She goes, and 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 that that's what's so funny. I mean, we're gonna try and get her into like the like uh, you place. know commercials and yeah. TV and stuff like that. But I want her to be a kid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't want her to be one of those child actors that they grow up and have all these issues and whatnot. So, but I will <laughs> say the parenting is important because I mean, I started when I was 12. He started dancing in in the industry a little bit when he was four, mm. and it's like we kept our head because of the parents that we had. Exactly. You yeah. still were able to be children. Yes. I, I'm assuming. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm yeah. So, oh, absolutely. So, so that's important. So yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure that my daughter, you know, still enjoys her life. Yeah. As a child, so she can look back and. Not say yeah at five. I, I was out. reading scripts. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, you know what I mean. Like she you knows no she, children's books for me. <laughs> right, right. So she she she's enjoying her her childhood, okay. and uh, but we're definitely gonna get her into some stuff like stuff. talk about Micah's voice, mm-hmm. and then also talk about your your station that you have yeah. at Dash Radio. Yes, uh, Micah's voice is a special nonprofit that your family set up. Yes, uh, it's a, a nonprofit that my wife and I uh, created. Um, it's named after uh, my son, Micah, who was diagnosed with autism at two. Mm. And basically, we provide uh, services for uh, families that have children with autism. Um, it's very expensive to do uh, just the bare minimum for a child um, with the condition um, to give uh, the child uh, exposure to behaviorists and occupational therapists, people who work with your child every day to make sure that he's able to do all the basic things that all of us are, are all of us need to do right. to survive yeah. and communicate and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Uh, Micah's voice um, provides those services for those families, those normal um, uh, blue collar families that can't afford um, any of those conditions because they can get very pricey. So we try to do that for them. You know, we give them grants for certain sessions and things. So like cool. That. So where can people go? Um, you can go to micasvoice.com. You can go to our Instagram at Micah's Voice and you can send us a note. Tell us how much you support us or any ideas or suggestions. You can donate money. You can donate time. You oh, can awesome. do all of those things. So awesome. um, And 100 percent of the proceeds, 100 percent goes to People. those families. Yeah. in need. Tell us about the walk coming up in April. Oh, and we do have a walk actually by uh, it's going to it's, it's set up by my son, my bro- my other son's twin brother. Um, Ty, who uh, is setting up an autism walk April 13th at uh, the El Camino Real uh, Charter School in Woodland so cool. Hills. So it's from one o'clock t- to four. So if you guys want to come out, if you guys want to come out, yes, yes. come hang with Absolutely. us, support, donate, buy a couple of items. It's going to be some some stands and things of that nature. And, yeah. and that money goes to our foundation as well as another um, young lady who we've known uh, since they were they were friends. And she also has a brother that has autism. So they're doing that for for the, for them and for the cause. So it's just kind of hang out and just show your face for the cause. It'd be great. Awesome. So cool. Let's talk about that station real quick. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a station like you guys. Um, it's called Boomerang, um, and basically it is a. The reason why I call it Boomerang is because we're taking it back, as you can, you know. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah. To, I see what you did to, there. <laughs> to, That's very to, great. To uh, the the era that I'm proud to say that I was a part of, which is the '90s. It's 90s R&B music, um, music that, an era that I'm proud to say I helped kind of shape and, and you, did you know, make a part yeah, of it. Did. And, and it, was a great, it was a great time <laughs> for music. I, I still listen to it now. I still bump it in my, in my iPhone and things of that nature. And it's just for those uh, guys and girls who want to feel a little bit of nostalgia, to go yeah. back and listen to 
those great 90s uh, R&B songs and things of that nature. And I also sprinkle some new artists uh, in the fold as well that I believe um, kind of represent the genre moving forward in a positive way. Nice. So it's not just the old school artists, but it's a few of the new ones too. And okay. I also have a radio show on my station called The Bridge, where I bridge old school to new, new school, school, where nice. it's literally dedicated to playing a 90s record and a record in 2019. Because so there are cool. some good artists out there oh, yeah. that, mm-hmm. that doesn't get enough attention yeah. um, in the business. So I try to give them that. Yeah, well, I feel like R&B has become something different in 2019 than yeah. it was in the 90s. It is but different. There are, there are some cool artists yeah, out there. Yeah, that are I mean, still keeping it, keeping it authentic. People yeah. like Andra yeah. Day. Yeah. People yeah. like yeah. Jacob Banks. Yeah. 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 Some great vocalists. You got so. her. You got Daniel Caesar. You you have yeah, Sabrina her. Claudio. Like, yeah. yeah. So funny. These these two grew up with uh, with her. Did oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we did. Gabby? They grew, yeah, yeah, they we did. grew up with her. Oh, yeah. She was in my first movie. And my second one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is, yeah she's like a child prodigy, man. She's a sweetie. Right? Yeah, 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 she's so talented. She's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. So I play her. <laughs> on I the play sta- her, <laughs> right, literally. On the station. So it, it's been a lot of fun, and you guys are great. Like, I, I love being here. I love coming here every Tuesday to record my show, and, and all the people here are supportive and beautiful. So I never imagined I had, I'd have my own station, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Well, we're thrilled, too. Yeah. We, we are the Build-A-Bear radio show, so we got to ask – if we can, do you remember a special time, uh, a special visit when you took your kids to the workshop to um, make their own bears? Yes. Um, let me see. I'm trying to remember what city it is. I'm so bad at these. <laughs> You've been all over the but, world. Yeah, my, my wife could probably. We were at the build a, board, build a Bear in, in Rome. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's, it's in crazy. But, in Antarctica. But, but we were traveling somewhere, and and my daughter, like, pr- practically went crazy. and. and <laughs> You know, she, we, I she want was, the whole was, store. Right, right, right. <laughs> Give me everything now. Right. So we we built her, and she still has it. Like it's a, it's a really cute bear, and she customized it herself. I forget what she named the darn thing, but like, and then I even got a got her a few like on my own. Like I would go to like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think I got one in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were in Toronto or something like that, or and and I was like, all right, let me get her a bear, and you know the whole thing. So when I, I a it from, it's it's detailed. Golly. Yeah. Man. Oh, oh yeah, they we go were in. there, and there's so many layers to the experience. Holy they cow. now have yeah. like the smells that you can put in the yeah. bear's paws that so you can smell Authentic. like candy corn. I'm like, they got thin mints. Like, it doesn't. It, it, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Build yeah. a bear and get yourself a thin mint. Exactly. So yeah, build a bear has been a part of the Stockman family for for many years now. So. Sean Stockman, thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate the love, guys. Thank you.